let's look at a brief history of just how much the shipping container has boosted world trade. What we've learned from studying the data is just how much the shipping container was a big breakthrough, arguably the big breakthrough, in the post-World War II expansion of global trade. This is a technological innovation which consumers generally do not handle directly and probably they don't think very much about, but it really has been quite significant. A key feature of the shipping container is not just the container itself, but its standardization. It's made it possible to have standard operating procedures for loading materials on and off of boats, running ports, and facilitating logistics, and this has made trade much easier to handle. The hard part about a lot of international trade is not shipping the goods across the ocean, but rather processing them when they're being packed up and processing them again when they're being unloaded. A big part of the gains from shipping containers have been their ability to support and induce a coordinated system involving cranes, ports, and storage, again with this key property of standardization, making it much easier to load and unload goods. A primary entrepreneur behind shipping containers, by the way, was an American, Malcolm McLean. He was a trucking magnet, and he first tried out the idea in 1956. Prior to shipping containers, which allowed for standardization and also machine-operated ports to a greater degree, a lot of the loading and unloading was done by dock workers. That cost a lot of money, and it also involved a lot of management problems and coordination and information problems as well. You don't actually see many workers in this picture, and today, quite often, a port is a pretty quiet place. This whole idea spread pretty rapidly and pretty fundamentally. So in 1966, just 1% of all countries had ports which could handle shipping containers. By 1983, that had gone up to about 90%. And it's astonishing how much port labor productivity rose in places where shipping containers were instituted. So for instance, in 1965, we have measurements of port labor productivity being 1.7 tons per hour. By 1970, a mere five years later, we have measurements where port labor productivity is about 30 tons per hour. Of course, that's a very significant increase. The best numerical estimate we have looks at 22 industrialized countries and finds that shipping containers explain a 790% of increase in trade over the first 20 years of their use. That estimate is found by comparing places which had introduced shipping containers and what their growth in trade was as compared to places which didn't or which did only later on. And even if that's an estimate on the high side, scholars are in general agreed that the technology of shipping containers has driven a much bigger increase than, say, bilateral free trade agreements. And according to the same measurements, those bilateral free trade agreements would account for a 45% increase in world trade over that same period. And of course, that's a much smaller growth than what we've gotten from the shipping containers. Above all, I think of the shipping container story as a tale of just how subtle and indirect and maybe hard to observe important innovations can be. Anyway, for sources to read more, there's a very good piece in the magazine The Economist. This should be online. The main empirical results discussed here are taken from this paper, which is a working paper on shipping containers. There's a whole book, very good to read, by Mark Levinson. It's called The Box. It's basically the history of the shipping container and not so much on shipping containers, but on trade and transport costs more generally, I would recommend this piece by David Hummels, and that's available online.